My name is Ashley Summers. I'm here with Mike Thompson, an OSM volunteer, and we're going to tell you about a project that we have been working with with our colleagues over the last year. We're very excited to tell you about it. Um, first, I want to let you know a little bit about the organization that I'm from. I work for the Denver Regional Council of Governments, or Dr. Cog for short. We are a regional planning organization that brings together local governments around the Denver metro area to plan for the future. So we help these local communities get together and collaborate and brainstorm to think about urban development and transportation into the future to make sure that we are planning for the best quality of life in the region for people who, will, who are here now and who will be here later. As I said, we serve a nine county area around the Denver metro region, so this is the area that we are paying attention to. And in particular, my team at Dr. Cog is a, is a data development team. I manage GIS, uh, GIS specialists and software developers, and we try to build regional data sets that will help us understand the built environment in this area so that we can forecast what the built environment needs to be in the future to maintain the quality of life that we have here. And one of the ways that we do that is by facilitating really large data projects. So, for example, for the last 15 years, we have had an aerial imagery project where Dr. Cog brings together 50 different partners in the region to purchase really high resolution aerial imagery, like three inch resolution, six inch resolution, throughout this entire 6,000 square mile area so that we can understand change over time. And recently we've been thinking, this model is so successful, we're able to provide such valuable data to so many partners with significant cost savings for them because we're doing like a bulk buy, why don't we do this with other data sets? So a few years ago, we started thinking about what we could add on and we thought we would do planometric features. What are planometric features? They are anything that you can see like from aerial imagery and delineate. So it's basically just features of the built environment, building roof prints, like outlines of buildings, sidewalk center lines, curb lines, parking lots, these things. We wanted to identify these from our imagery, and we decided to do about 1,100 square miles around the Denver Metro. We were digitizing this off of 2014 aerial imagery. Just for funsies, how many buildings do you think are in that purple blob? That's very, very close. A little bit lower, but very good. <laughs> it's actually, go ahead. Four <laughs> it's a good guess. Um, so there's actually just a little over 600,000 buildings in this area. And we digitized them all. So, <laughs> so to tell you a little bit about our capture methodology, uh, Dr. Cog, we're a pretty small shop. Like our, our data development team is, is four people. So what we're doing with these giant data development projects is paying a vendor. We're facilitating all of these different partners from our community, bringing together their needs and also their money, and then we go out and we find a vendor that can do these things for us. And so we have a, a vendor that had, purchased, or that had captured three inch and six inch resolution imagery in this area, and then we, there we go, and then we paid them to manually draw in all of these features over 1,100 square miles. And this includes building roof prints. You can see the level of detail there that we captured. It also includes like parking lots and sidewalk center lines like I mentioned earlier. All of this was validated by our partners that contributed funding. So after we got it in house, we put it up on a web map for them and people in the local communities who actually live and work here uh, validated it. So we feel pretty confident that the data is high quality. When we originally went about this project, we thought, well, this is gonna be great for municipal mapping. It's gonna provide some context. It will help us with our master plans um, of community development, help us understand sidewalk availability, things like that. And then once we got the data in and realized just how high quality it was, for example, this is a visualization of the building data, we realized that there's so much more utility here for things like 3D building models. Um, and, and so many other things. There's just so many emerging uses because of the level of detail. So one of the more novel things about this program, not just that 
we were able to leverage all of these community needs to and find a way to actually buy this data. But we actually, before we got started, sat down with all the partners and said, how about we not sell this? How about we give this away? So we did. Uh, after we finished, we didn't, there was no waiting time. There was no um, plan to recoup cost off of public data. We're public agencies. This was purchased with taxpayer dollars. So as soon as it came in house, we put it online and we let people have it. Woo! Uh, we're, we're very proud of that because it's not easy. <laughs> uh, but we wanted to go a step further because not everybody in the world know, goes to the Dr. Cog website, sadly. Um, <laughs> and, and we know this, but <laughs> and we want to find a way to provide more value. There's a lot of value here. We want to make sure that it gets out into the community. And so our thought was we should give this to OSM. And we, helped, we thought that not only could it could help us uh, show some visibility to what we're doing, create this partnership with people that we know could provide value back to us and that could be a, a, a great relationship. But we really wanted to see this data show up on the map. So we reached out to OSM volunteers as soon as our first project was over, which was last summer. And we started learning about the guidelines for bulk imports, like what would that mean? What kind of documentation should we do? What type of community discussion do we need to engage in? We started a wiki page, and we decided, even though we collected nine features as part of our planometric um, program, we were going to do building roof prints first, because those are a really valuable asset that we think more people need. So that was the pilot that we worked with. And then we spent the next year trying to figure out what it would mean to get 600,000 buildings into OSM in a way that values the existing OSM product. And to talk more in detail about that, I'll pass it over to Mike. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, you know, one of the great things about OSM in general, and this partnership in particular, is the relationships uh, you establish. And I don't, th I don't think we had met in person before this morning. <laughs> so I was talking to Jenny and it's like, I'm here to present. I don't know if my uh, co-presenter is here or not. <laughs> but uh, it's been a wonderful partnership. Uh, just because I'm up here speaking uh, doesn't mean that I did um, the bulk of the work. We had a lot of other people on the team particular uh, Chad Hammond, is Chad in the, no, so a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about, Chad actually did all this technical heavy lifting. Uh, Russ Defner, uh, Jim McAndrews, uh, and uh, Curtis Brown, I don't think Curtis is here. Um, the other thing I want to say is this is a work in progress. We want your feedback during the Q&A session, and it, for many of us, this is our first import as OSM volunteers, so any how-to as um, in addition to the, you need to fix something uh, would be greatly appreciated if we don't have time in the Q&A, catch us afterwards uh, in, the, in the lobby. Um, so the general process was uh, we got the Dr. Cog data, we reprojected the WGS84, which is what OSM uses. And then we uh, conflated in uh, some other open data uh, address points. And we've gotten some feedback on that, that the nearest building may not be the best match. And we're working on uh, that. We got some suggestions from some other uh, sub-communities in OSM as to how that might be done better. And uh, we made a distinction between uh, garages and sheds, which wasn't part of the Dr. Cog data based upon uh, square footage. Uh, here's the way we uh, map the building type tag. Uh, so different schemas, different uh, ways of classifying things. And then you see the relative count. Hopefully that matches up to the number that Ashley gave you. Uh, yeah, anyone really good at math? <laughs> Uh, and here's how we map the at attributes in uh, the GIS data from Dr. Cog to uh, the OSM tagging. 
uh, we, we, Chad, pulled the, the data into uh, PostGIS, uh, sliced it up into uh, one kilometer square chunks, if you will. Uh, some magic happened there that we made sure that every building appeared only in one chunk, only in one grid cell. Buildings were not split uh, if they you know, straddled that. Um, I think it's kind of random as to which exactly, you know, if it straddled, if it got on the north one or the south one, but it's only in one, and that's, uh, I think, a very important point. And when we talk about multi-part buildings, we made sure all the parts only resided in one grid cell. So speaking of multi-part buildings, this is the little tiny techie thing that I did. Uh, in the Dr. Cog data, the, the schema is very flat. If you had, let's say, a, a multi-story, not multi-story, but multi-level, so you might have a hotel, has a two-story lobby, and then all the rooms are in this 10-story tower, uh, that those would be two separate pieces of geometry, two separate records. Uh, they would share a building ID. Uh, the, uh, the proper way or a way in OSM to represent that is to use a building relation. So I wrote a Python script, uh, used a piece of open source software called Shapely. It's maintained by, I see some heads and some people smiling. Yeah, if anyone else use Shapely? So uh, great piece of software um, maintained by a guy that lives in Fort Collins, Colorado, named Sean Gillies. I don't think Sean's here today. Um, but anyway, so I went through and I grouped together all of the buildings that had the same ID, made a relation, uh, created an outline. I used Shapely to union all of those together to make an outline. Um, so then the outline member uh, got the tags shown there, and then the parts, the original buildings in the Dr. Cog data became parts uh, and members of that relation. Um, so we based our process, um, the process that we're going to ask additional volunteers to go through on what Los Angeles did with the building, their building imports, which we understand was pretty well received. Um, so we have a custom instance of the tasking manager, uh, currently lives on Chad's GitHub account, it probably will move, or his AWS account. Um, so the basic process is that we'll ask volunteers to download through the tasking manager the OSM data in these one kilometer squares. Tasking manager will also provide one kilometer squares of Dr. Cog data. They'll manually go through. If there is a conflict, if there, you know, the building exists in both, we, we will use the replace geometry function and we'll transfer at, you know, conflate or combine all the attributes uh, and then the two layers, the OSM layer and the Dr. Cog layer, will be merged in JAWS. This is all in JAWSM and uploaded. If there are any conflicts we're gonna, that can't be resolved uh, through uh, satellite imagery, we'll keep track of those and do some uh, field survey work. Um, uh, one other thing that we need to get the, um, the converted data, those uh, one kilometer squares of Dr. Cog data in OSM format up for you, the community, to review uh, prior to us getting started. Um, I think we already talked about that. Um, so, uh, you know, this is where we're at right now. Uh, we're seeking input, and then we'll we'll move forward with the input. So. Uh, Questions, comments, suggestions? Uh, yeah. Hello, um, I have a quick question. So I, I noticed you guys like, actually have like building IDs that were associated with like in these, I guess it would be like an area, a bunch of buildings. And I'm, I'm curious about like what your plan is in terms of like maintaining this data because I believe over time like maybe like attributes of like the different buildings would change the, like 
maybe buildings would grow, maybe buildings would be demolished. And I'm curious to know like how you do the data modeling to like track this lineage between the the data that you've imported into OpenStreetMap to the data from the government? It's a great question. I think that we are still thinking through that. Uh, one of the reasons why there's not data available now in Tasking Manager for you to pull down is because since the original project, we've done an update project. <laughs> and so uh, we have some momentum uh, through Dr. Cog and its partners to continue doing this, these updates where we don't re-digitize every building. Now this fabric of, of the built infrastructure is laid and now they just go through and digitize the changes and make any attribute or geometry changes that are out there. Um, so we're not really sure. I think we're going to find out a lot as, as we go through this initial process to have volunteers start checking the data in and and give us feedback on what the like conflation is like and, and how uh, we might need to break up the data even further to check in you know, buildings over time. So I think we're open to some feedback on that particular process. Over the past year, we've mainly spent most of our time thinking how we're gonna do it the first time. <laughs> right. um, if I recall what you told us on a call, that your vendor will provide three separate deliverables like ads, deletes, and then the total. Yeah, that's that's correct. So we are, I mean, we're tracking this building ID here, um, and our vendor has just delivered um, the next set for us. So we have one data set that is this original from 2014. We have a data set that shows everything on the ground from 2016, and then we have a change data set that highlights um, everything that's happened. So building demos, new buildings, um, and then attribution changes. So somehow, We'll work all of that out. <laughs> Can't hear. Oh, there we go. Takes a second. Hi, Mike. Um, couple suggestions. Um, I don't know if you had the same problem I did when I first did the Seattle import. Uh, we had a lot of address nodes that didn't fall inside the building polygon. I've since learned that if I use the um, parcel uh, data to see which uh, buildings are in there, I can then put the address node inside the building and attach it to the building, which improves, I think, the, the detail much better. Um, and then one last thing, for my good friend Paul McComb over there, uh, he's an address expert, and his county, King County, they have a unique address ID that um, stays there. So you can also put that in there, and then as addresses change, you can get that data and update your, your address data pretty easily. Right, thanks, Cliff. Yes, um, good point on the addresses that may not be on the building or even near the proper building. So we're looking into, we'll look into that. Um, we did a similar thing in Grand Junction, Colorado, earlier this year of about 50,000 building footprints. Um, and so we'd be happy to share our experience on a smaller scale of how that happened and the process that went through. Um, as well, we have a custom tasking manager at osmcolorado.com that you're welcome to utilize if you needed something off of GitHub. Um, so just wanted to offer that out. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, let's talk afterwards. We'll get connected. Hi. My question is, with the JOSM replace geometry operation, is there a tag merging strategy that occurs? Um, yeah, so according to Cliff, yes. The primary purpose, though, is um, we want to preserve the history. So if um, you had drawn a building here in Denver, three years ago, we don't want to wipe out that history. We want it to still say that you were the original person to create it, and we're, we're just version two. So it reuses the ways, the nodes, uh, as many nodes as it can uh, to make that new geometry. How did your vendor know the building use that's a really good question. Um, they are interpreting everything from 
their aerial imagery, and they are not local. So they don't know very much, which is why our, our categories are pretty broad. I mean, they can tell industrial from residential. They can generally tell commercial. Um, and in some cases, they can tell public data because they can say, like, well, that's a school because there's a football field next to it. You know? So they're mainly interpreting from um, just a visual interpretation of imagery. They do write that down in the data set they give us, though. So they'll let us know, like, um, if they had any additional sources to let them know what the building was. Uh, but I would say that you have to take it with a grain of salt, knowing how they're putting that attribution in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think overwriting that use with something that uh, is more accurate would, would definitely be a great way to go. Um, but also keep in mind that we did have our um, like local GIS staff and the staff of our partners validating. So there have been an extra set of eyes on the data since the vendor gave it to us, but still not at the scale that it, that it needs to be. I mean, this is a huge area um, and a very detailed data. So all of the value that this community could bring, um, I think, to this data, to the map, would, would be fantastic. Other questions? I have a question. Um, having gone through this process, uh, what would you say would be the feasibility of, if you're working with a private vendor, having them provide the data in a format that matches the OpenStreetMap schema from the get-go? I think that's doable. I mean, they work for us, right? So we just, we have to ask them to do it. And I think now that we have um, created this partnership and we know more about what OSM needs, we can certainly keep that in mind as we sign future contracts. One other thing to note on a slightly different note, but tying into an earlier presentation here, is that if this building roof print import goes well, we have nine other features, including sidewalk center lines for 1,100 square miles that we could plug in so that we could also have an open trip planner. Cool. You know, having said that, I, I think the oh, first, yeah, well, no, the first time through this was painful um, because we didn't know, at least I didn't know what we were doing. And there's like, well, is, is that license good enough? Is that what? What's the format have to look like? Do we have to write some software? Which software? You know, now we've figured it out. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if the vendor can provide it, great. But we've, I think, learned a huge amount going through this. Any question? Um, I'm curious about. So you did this at the regional government scale. I'm curious what your thoughts are on uh, if that's the right scale, like if we were to scale this out to other regions, if at that regional government scale, at a lower level or possibly a higher level, like what is your, your takeaway on, on that? I think uh, the regional scales is a good one just because a lot of agencies like Dr. Cog have a history of bringing together their local communities. That's what our agency is mandated to do federally. Uh, so we already have a relationship with all these other communities that we can bring together. Uh, so it, it works out pretty well. I think a little bit smaller than that also works, but maybe doesn't have the, um, just doesn't end up with as much data. And the larger scale gets even harder because like at the state level, the more partners you add in, the more needs you are accommodating, the more disparate the needs get and it's harder to pull off a successful project. So I think we were really in the sweet spot, not that it can, can't work anywhere else, I think it certainly can, but um, I feel like we got lucky in a lot of different ways to pull this project off, and now that we have momentum, we have to keep, um, keep it going to show that this really is like, something that's, that's valuable for the community. We are considering, once we get everything into the tasking manager, chopping it up into separate projects, because it might be very discouraging to a volunteer to say, you know, there's thousands of uh, tasks and, oh, we'll never get done. So maybe by municipal area, maybe by arbitrary area, so at least we can say, yeah, so we've got something done. <laughs> Lots of discouragement. Lots of <laughs> Any other questions? We have 10 whole minutes of leeway here. 
don't think we, we didn't talk that fast. Uh, I am very curious about your population, Denver and Metro Denver area. The population of Denver is about 600,000. The population of Denver is 600,000 would be correct. And Metro Denver will be between three and four billion. I'm not sure. Population of Metro between three billion or four billion. I'm not sure. No, that's. Uh you're very close. Uh, we're at Metro Denver right now is 2.4 million, and we are expected, since we're a planning agency, we're, ex um, we're expecting a little over, th uh, close to four by 2040. Okay. You got it. Any other questions? Oh. Um, how about entryways? And this might be for people that have done the import too. Um, I think the center of the building address is great, like you said, Cliff, for keeping it with the building. And um, how much work has been done on entryways? And is that kind of like, you know, way down the line? But certainly for all emergency management data sets, um, you know, you know, from the state scale, like we're interested in entryways for emergency access. Um, curious thoughts from the crowd or. Um, I don't think, we're not, I know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anybody have anything? Well, if I'm not mistaken, OSM practice can support that. Um, to what extent that has been implemented, I don't know. For anyone who didn't hear that, he was essentially saying that that would probably be like a field survey kind of process, uh, so it might be parallel to this, but probably can't be seen from aerial imagery, I would imagine. While you're out there getting the entryways, count the units for us, too. <laughs> That'd be great. You can count the number of mailboxes in front of the building to get the units. But, Perfect. Uh, you can lead the effort. Yeah, uh, we'll do it tonight. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So with entryways, it's becoming more common to add the station entrances for public transport stations and transit centers, rail stations, and uh, maps and transit land is working on to try to boost that effort. Um, but go ahead and add your station entrances <laughs> wherever you are in the world, um, because it'll definitely help out with multimodal routing and pedestrian routing. Any other questions or comments? See, I knew there were more. Just a little comment on the on the, on the fact that uh, the doors can be only gathered through uh, field observations. Actually, we have a lot of that in on our street side imagery, and we have you know map OSM cars in Mapillary, and I think um, you know from what I see, in the they're currently busy extracting you know signs and road signs and. All of that stuff, but you can also extract doors from that. So I wonder if um, any of the <clears throat> companies do they have any plans on doing that? And because this would be one of these examples where it would take a really long time for people to complete, and this is where machine learning can really step in and kind of fill the gap and improve the the data quality and precision. Yeah, we have a really great JS community here, obviously, as uh, from the ha show of hands earlier. Um, and Mapillary did reach out to our listserv recently, and we're going to host a Mapillary um, hackathon. Mapathon is coming up. So for those Coloradans in the room, um, and maybe we can, you know, combine that with, with this as well and, uh, you know, really try to see how, how far we can push this. I'm obviously really excited. Yeah, yeah, Ashley. Yeah, Dr. Cog. <laughs> Well, yeah. well, let's get it out on the, the meetup. We'll yeah. 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 So the local community does have a meetup page that Russ uh, kind of heads up, uh, OSM Colorado. So if you're local or visiting in the area sometime, 
I'm going to check it out, and things like this will be on there. Okay, we, you, can, you can go now. We'll release you now. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening and having great questions.